What are you doing there, Devlin? What are you doing there? Cutting this hard shaft. Why? So then we can fill in the cracks. Yeah, and why are you cutting at that piece? Because it's too high. It's too high? Yeah. So we haven't even got the uh, rink finished yet. We decided to extend it by four feet. And this corner here was a little bit high. So we decided to take the dirt from here and lower it so you won't have thin ice. And we're going to move that dirt down here to this corner where it was super low. So we're taking up the sides. We're going to put the dirt underneath and then reinstall the sides. And that should make the, link, the rink pretty well level. It's a little bit of work now, but for... Years going forward, it'll be less than putting in pallets like we thought about doing originally. Reinstalling the sides after we lowered the dirt by about five inches. So folks, most of that groundwork preparation that you saw was from my first attempt at the rink last year. I just want to add that the more level you get your ground, the easier this whole process is going to be. Uh, before I did all that digging last year, I actually set the rink up. And as you can see in this picture right here that I'll, uh, I'll cut to, this picture here shows how unlevel my ground was. There are a bunch of suggestions on how you could fill in the low spots in your rink should you choose to do that instead of leveling the ground. But I decided that the best option for a multiple year rink was just fix the problem now and not have to deal with it in the future. So that's what I did. And I did a similar thing this year. I had to take up some sides and I put in some dirt there to make the rink actually four feet bigger. So once you get the ground work done and you get your rink in place, I'm going to give you a couple of tips that I picked up on last year. So what I, one of the things I learned is it's not a huge big deal if your corners aren't perfectly square. You don't need to go using math to square up your corners. All I did was I just took the corner square, I put it in the corner, and that one there is actually right on according to the square. And then I braced the corners. I did the same thing with each four corners. And uh, that's fine because it's not like you're building a foundation on this or anything. The second thing that I learned was You've got to make this easy to take apart at the end of the season because if it's a multiple year project you want to be able to store the wood and reuse it so a lot of people are tempted to use uh, some type of a wood screw or decking screw there's two issues with that these countersink into the wood and after the wood swells from all the moisture in the winter it's very hard to get those screws out you generally end up twisting them off or not even being able to access them at all because they're countersunk so the second issue with the screws is they're actually not as strong as nails or leg bolts. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of water pressure in these rinks and I actually spent a lot of time on the bracing on the sides of it, but I put two screws, three screws in each corner and I actually had one corner last winter that actually the three screws sheared off. We had had a heavy melt and the rink filled with water. When it did, these three screws sheared off and the corner of the rink separated. Thankfully, there was enough snow there that it held it together and I caught it quick and reinforced it. But I don't recommend using screws. You can use nails, but again, they'll be hard to take apart. So my suggestion is get yourself a drill or an impact driver and a attachment for a socket and pick yourself up some leg bolts. I just bought quarter leg bolts and I used a 5 16th washer. The washers are important because if you don't put a washer on, the nuts again will the bolts again will countersink and you'll have trouble getting them out. But if you put the washer on, and again, I went a little bigger with a 5 16 washer on a quarter bolt, it'll allow your socket to easily remove those bolts come spring. So this is what I have here. I have a 5 16 leg bolt. I have an impact driver and I have a 7 16 socket with an attachment for the impact driver. And as you can see here, right here, I put the bolts in there in the corners. So once you have your boards in place, uh, your corners done and secured, what you wanna do is you want to make sure that your rink is sides are straight. Again, they don't have to be perfect, but uh, it is nice, I mean, it gives you that little bit of uh, 
pride of your work when everything is somewhat straight. So all I'm doing is I put a screw in each corner of the rink and I'm running a string line around the rink and I'm going to check the uh, straightness. And that way when you're bracing your rink against the water pressure, you can uh, adjust it in or out a little bit to make your side straight. Because when you get into longer distances, like for instance the 40 feet I'm using here, your uh, boards tend to wave a little bit if you don't actually measure them. So this is just your general landscaping string or construction string. You can buy it on a spool. So I'm just going to pull this tight and I'm going to fasten it on to the corner screw that I put in place. A little half hitch. As you can see on this side, there is a little bit of adjustment needed on this side. It has to come in a little bit in the center. The two ends are good. simple as that. Now this side is straight, so what I'll do is when I uh, put the braces in, I'll make sure that I don't move it and I'll leave the string in place until everything is secured. I'm just going to walk around now and show you the other side. This side here is actually not bad. This is the other side. That'll certainly uh, fit within my tolerances. I don't know if you can see the string here or not, but that's the string here, moving it. This side here, however, I can actually see this with my naked eye. You can see there how it uh, how it goes in and out. So what I'll do is when I get to this section up here, I'll fix this as I brace it. So now I've got my corner square and I've got the sides straight, I have to put the braces in for the sides. Again, uh, there's a lot of pressure on this, so on 40 feet, I'm probably gonna put in a brace every six feet, so that'll give me, or I'll go every five feet, that'll give me uh, eight braces on each side. That should hold it in place, I'll show you that when I get to it. So at this point, I'm gonna check the uh, sides of the rink for level. I know this is pretty good because of all the work that I put into it, uh, what you want to make sure of is that if you have high spots in your ground, if you have a high spot in one corner of your rink, you want to make sure that you have a minimum of three inches of water over top of the ground uh, just to prevent breakthrough and give yourself a good layer of ice. So what happens is if your ground is not level, you may have 12 inches in one corner and you may have three in the other. But the closer your ground is to level when you start, the less of a difference there'll be. And trust me, that makes a huge difference, which I learned last year. I started out with 12 inches of water and uh, in one end and I decided to fix the ground and I'm glad I did because what happens is then you have to brace the sides of your rink a whole lot more and the whole water pressure is uh, no, another added problem. So I'll check the level now and then show you the bracing. So all I have here is a four foot level, obviously a longer level would be better. If your string is really tight you can use a string level but on 40 feet sometimes it's a little bit hard to get it tight enough, it's going to sag in the middle anyway. So I'm just going to do a quick check and make sure that it's somewhere close. The side's pretty close. The side there is right on, so I'm just going to go around the rink and just have a look and make sure that it's good. There's also something else that I want to point out here too that uh, I actually learned this by trial and error last year. Someone told me to pay attention to it and I didn't. But if you have a space underneath the boards in your rink, like if for whatever the reason you lifted them up to level it and you end up with a space, or even in my case here, I didn't have to lift them up, but there's just natural depressions in the ground. When you put the water in your tarp, it will push the tarp out underneath those boards 100%. So the bottom of your boards has to be level to the ground. If it's not, you have to fill it in. I used some sides to do that last year, and some of those are still here in place. So right here, you can see right here, by where my foot is, I can put my foot right underneath. 
So what I found the best thing to use was I had some old pieces of grass, but I guess you can fill it in with anything. But I took some pieces of grass and I just put it in underneath the boards here. You can use soil or whatever the case, but I have a naturally low spot in the ground here actually, so I'm gonna have a little bit more ice here. But what I'll do is I'll just go around now and I'll fill in underneath the edge of this boards so the tarp doesn't blow out underneath there. Because like I said, it will for sure. So now that I've got the uh, boards all in place and I've got them uh, pretty well straight and the corners are square within reason, it's time to brace the sides. I just got some scraps of wood I used. I sharpened out some two by fours. I'm gonna pound those down. I'm gonna put, uh, I've got it measured in one two three four five on my 26 foot side and i'm gonna put uh seven probably on the 40 foot side 42 feet actually and that should keep it all in place when you put the water in that'll keep your ring from pushing out so i'm just gonna go around now and i'm gonna pound these in I will add as well that you do want to put one on each on uh, each side of each corner. This corner here is actually down in the ground, so I don't need uh, pegs on this corner. But the other three corners, I'll put a peg on each side of the corners to keep it in place, and that'll keep your corners together. So that's the majority of the framing done there now. I am just going to run around and put a bolt in each one of the uh, support stakes I just hammered in. It's probably not really necessary, but it'll just feel a little better there. I know they won't move when I'm putting up the rest of the stuff. And then the only other structural thing that you want to do before the weather gets cold and you can still put a stake in the ground is I'm going to stick up the corner post for the backstop and they have to be reinforced pretty good because with the weight of the net and when the snow gets on it and the windy conditions, that'll blow around a lot. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you reinforce that a lot. So I'll put in these screws and then I'll show you one of the corner posts I'm going to put up. So this is the post that I'm going to use for the netting backstop behind the goal nets. And this actually looks pretty solid, but when you get the netting up and the wet snow gets on in the wind, this moves a lot. And I can see here that the rink boards are moving because I fastened it to them as well as putting it down on the ground a little bit. So I'm just going to put a couple of short cross braces on here for support. perfectly solid this way and I'm going to do another one this way as well you have to be careful if you're putting screws from the outside in especially on the side boards there that you don't go in through your rink boards because that'll tear your tarp and I do as I said earlier in the video I recommend using leg bolts not screws these ones here are uh, there's not a whole lot of strain on them but uh, it's all I had left, so I'm going to put a couple in now, and then I'll come back and put the leg bolts in this I've had. So with these two supports on here, that makes this a whole lot stronger. Like, there's no movement either way. There's just a little bit of bend in the board. But it's not going to affect the stability of the rink, and it won't cause your sides to blow out. So then you just do the same thing here on each of the four corners. And I'm going to put one in the middle as well, because 26 feet is too far to span with one piece of netting. But if you have a rink that's 16 feet, you may get away with just one on each corner. Uh, I don't know if you noticed there, but I actually did use wood screws here. 
Uh, that was because I ran out of the leg bolts, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run to the hardware store, pick up a few more leg bolts, and I'll replace those screws uh, before the winter sets in, and that way next year it'll be easier to take it apart. So that's pretty much it folks, the rink is set up, and uh, it's ready to put on the backstop here, the netting, I'm going to do that in a few minutes. Uh, basically I just got some, you can buy some fish net at some local supply stores, a uh, heavy duty net, or the orange snow fencing is what I used last year. So I just stapled this on with a staple gun and it held perfectly fine. Uh, you'll see now in the video I'm going to cut to is uh, some still pictures of the installation of the tarp. I did want to wait and try and do this video this year because it'll be too late then to be of any benefit to anybody. So a bunch of these pictures now are going to be still pictures and a couple of videos I think might be mixed in with it. But uh, if you have any questions on my experiences and what I found worked or didn't work or anything I didn't mention, feel free to uh, leave a comment below and I'll answer your questions as best I can. In this picture here, I just placed a tarp on the ground before I installed the rink liner. There were some sharp rocks and a little bit of uh, uneven ground there and I wanted to protect the tarp. The red string in this picture is a Christmas light. It's a red rope light and I laid that across the center ice mark of the rink. The kids loved it. It gave them something to use for off sides and it was certainly a nice touch in the night time when, uh, when it was illuminated. If you are going to put lines on your ice, make sure that you don't use paint because that will collect sunlight and your ice will melt in the daytime uh, due to the heat from the sun. So if you want to do it, uh, install lights underneath on the ground before you install your rink liner. This is just a little look at the rink here when it's uh, finished and waiting for some cold weather to install the tarp. Right here is where we're installing the tarp. It certainly takes a few people to do this. This rink is, uh, this year it's 26 by 42, so you want several people to do it. You want to pull your tarp as tight as you can get it, get all the wrinkles out, and then I put a little bit of water in the rink just to keep the tarp in place, and I use some C clamps around the edges, because if you don't, the wind is, at least here anyway, the wind will blow the tarp in, and you don't want it to freeze into the ice and you also leave your C-clamps a little bit slack so as the water fills up and the tarp settles there's a little bit of movement there. And this is what it looks like as the water is going into the rink and it's held in place with the uh, C-clamps. So right here is the start of the rink liner boards, I call them. I put them on the inside of the rink to protect the tarp from pucks and skates. In this picture here, you can see on top, it's just a straight L bracket. It's a one and a half inch L bracket, uh, three quarters of an inch wide. I purchased that at a hardware store and then I bent it so that it looks like the bottom two in the picture. And that's the brackets that I used. Right here is just a couple of pictures showing the process of how I bent them. I just put them in the vise and hit them with a hammer. And this picture here is the finished bracket after it's been bent and it's screwed on to the rink liner board. This will just drop down over the 2x10s as you'll see in the next video here. So we got our brackets here now that will drop down over the rink and this will be the protection on the inside. Slide this out now. I might have to lock down to the other end, I don't know. Nope. So that drops over. Pull your tarp tight. Mine's going into the tarp and go up out of the way. That board is down in place. So now when Devlin is playing hockey, the puck won't tear up the tarp. This is just a couple of views of the rink. It's actually pretty well complete here, but as you notice in the pictures, these were taken actually before I installed the rink boards. But uh, it's uh, quite a nice sight in the nighttime. So folks, let's look at my rink assembly. 
Uh, obviously, this is I've cut back to this year, and it's not quite finished. The netting is not quite up in the back there, but you saw what I did there in those still pictures with the netting and uh, ring boards. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll leave a link for the local Newfoundland Outdoor Rink Facebook page. That's a great resource to draw on. Everybody, all the members of that group are fantastic for giving advice and answering questions. And good chance that <clears throat> any of the things you're wondering about doing, someone's already done it and found a better way, or they can tell you if it worked or if it didn't work. So again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if I don't know the answer, I'll see if I can find someone who does. Thanks for watching everybody, and I uh, hope you all have fun skating this winter. Cheers. First skate on your rink. It's first test fell down and didn't go to the bottom. Huh? It's two and a half inches there for sure. It was cracking while I walked on, but I think it was just in the bread. I think it's the walking around the edges there. Yeah. Like just letting go from the wooden net and settling in. Because it's going to settle, right?